good morning, friends. Welcome to River Oaks Kids. Um, whether, wherever you're joining us from, whether it be your home or whatever, um, we're just so glad that you get to join us and that we get to be together without even actually being together. So we've been working on relationships this month, as you probably remember, and we've been using a really important tool to do that. Does anybody know what tool I'm talking about? A screwdriver! No, but you're close! It's forgiveness, exactly right. And forgiveness is deciding that someone who has wronged you does not have to pay. So this month we've learned about how fixing relationships takes some hard work, um, but with God's help we can do it. And God knows um, forgiveness is really important, not just for the person that we forgive, but for us too. We have to be willing to take that first step towards forgiveness so that we can forgive others. And remember last week <clears throat> we learned about our friend Zacchaeus, the tax collector, and how when we forgive others, it can change them, just like it changed Zacchaeus. So, today we've got a cool story about siblings, and I know a lot of you are going to be able to relate because you have siblings. So, this is a story about two brothers, and it's a parable that Jesus told as a way to help people understand uh, something really important. And this parable is found in the Gospel of Luke. If you want to follow along in your Bibles, you can turn to Luke chapter 15 um, and follow along there. So, as you may remember, Jesus did and said so many things that the crowds of people would just follow him everywhere he went. Um, and most of the time he was taking care of their needs. He would teach them, he'd heal their sicknesses, and he was even feeding them as he went. But sometimes even Jesus needed a break, as we all do. And so he would like actually have to climb mountains or just sail away uh, in a boat just to get a moment to himself. But then there were some religious leaders called the Pharisees, and they were angry that Jesus cared about all people equally, even the ones who didn't seem to be following all the rules. You see, the Pharisees were big rule followers, and they believed that by following all the rules, that made them much closer to God than anyone else was. So Jesus told them a parable to teach them a lesson. So I'm going to have a couple of my helpers uh, come on stage and help us with our story this morning. So we have Miss Heidi and Miss Sarah. Hi. Welcome, welcome. Yes. So once we had a man. We're going to call him Dad. Nat, that's going to be you, Heidi. So we had a dad, and this man had two sons. Now, um, this story is really just about the younger one, so we've got our younger yes. son sign, and that's going to be our friend Sarah. This is now dad and younger son. Say hello from where you are at home. <laughs> so, tradition said that when the father died, his sons would receive... Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> his sons would receive an inheritance after he died, and that inheritance would be things like money, animals, land, all kinds of fun stuff like that, really anything that the father had would go to his sons. So one day, the younger son approached his dad and he demanded his share of the family's thing. So this is for you. She wants the money now. He, sorry. Um, and he wanted his inheritance now, on no uncertain terms. So the thing was, this was incredibly insulting for the son to ask his father for the inheritance. Not just because he's asking for money, but because it was something that the son would get after his father died. So by going to his father and asking for this inheritance, he was basically saying, Dad, I wish you'd just die already. And that's, that's pretty, I know, it's rude. That must have hurt the father's heart quite a bit. But he agreed and gave his son his share of the family's things. So he got his, his money and he gave the son his share of the stuff. And his son, he, he packed up his things, here you go. Oh, that was upside down, my bad. And he, he left for a far away country. And dad just stayed here and he was kind of sad. You can have a, have a seat if you want while son's going to party it up. And in this country far from home, the son began to really live it up. He started to party away. <laughs> he started to party with his, with his fancy hats that he got and buy all these accessories. And he was just living a little bit of a wild lifestyle. <laughs> and partying it up all the time, and he was having a really great time. Until that is, oh wow, just make it, until eventually, he, he ran out of money, guys. He was like, oh, oh no, yeah, guys, he ran out of money. He had spent all his money on wild living. But things were about to get even worse for him, because this faraway country started to get low on food, and the son got desperate, so he went to work for someone, 
He was feeding the pig. Here's a one, a piggy, two, a piggy. Uh, you know what? Three. Let's just be on the safe side. Um, and he started feeding the pigs. In fact, the son got so hungry that the food the pigs were eating started to look really good to him. And he actually started to think about eating the pig's food. Ew, right? That's disgusting. But thankfully, the son shook that idea right off. And he started to think clearly. He thought, I could go home. He could go home and admit that he had done wrong, and he could beg his father for forgiveness and to let him be a servant. Because after all, the servants in his father's house, hey, they at least had food to eat. They didn't have to eat what the pigs were eating. So the son started off for home, and the dad saw him coming when he was still a long way off, and he started to run to his son. And when the father reached his son, they were so excited to see each other that they gave each other a big old hug and kiss. And you can skip that if you want, you know, because, we, you know, why not? But the son was so ashamed of the way he had acted. And he said this. He said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattest calf and kill it. Let's have a big dinner and celebrate. And this son of mine was dead, but he is alive again. He was lost, but now is found. Let's celebrate. <coughs> Yay, he's back, son. All right. Let's have a big round of applause from where you are, wherever you are for our volunteers this morning. They did such a good job. So, guys... The father had freely forgiven his younger son, and that's amazing. But the story Jesus was telling wasn't finished yet. Because the thing is, remember, this father had two sons, and the older son was still out working in the fields at this time. Was he going to be as forgiving as his father was when he realized his brother had returned and there was going to be a big party for him? Well, let's find out next week. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so, guys, there's a reason why Jesus told that story. He wanted the religious leaders to understand that it isn't that some people are good and some people are bad and Jesus only loves the good ones. He wanted them to understand that uh, all of us need God's forgiveness, whether we've done a lot of good things or a lot of bad things, whether we've followed all the rules or not, he, all of us need forgiveness just the same. And so we've got our story that's going to be clipped to our timeline this week. And it's this picture of the lost son embracing his father. Because you see, God is just like the father in the story that Jesus told. All of us, at some point, we're like that younger son. God takes us back when we make wrong choices. Because we've made wrong choices and we just need to run to the father sometimes. And that's God. We remember that we can always come back to him and we can find his perfect love and forgiveness. He's always wanting to forgive us when we mess up. And God has had this rescue plan for us since the very beginning. Ever since Adam and Eve first sinned in that garden, he planned that when the time was right, God would send Jesus to be our Savior. And Jesus carried out God's plan, and he took the punishment for our sins and all the wrong things we've done. And all you have to do is believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he came to die for your sins. Every single one. And you will be forgiven. God offers us forgiveness once and for all because of what Jesus did for our sins. It's like our bottom line says this week, everyone needs to be forgiven. Turn to somebody in your house right now and say, everyone needs to be forgiven. And that's why Jesus died for us. Anytime you mess up, guys, you don't have to wonder if God is going to forgive you. You already know God wants to forgive you. And all you have to do is ask. You can come back to him and his love and his forgiveness will be there every time. And then... When we accept that forgiveness, it's easier for us to give the people, to forgive the people who have maybe hurt us. Because we remember how forgiving God is towards us. So tune in next week to find out what happens with our older brother. And before I let you go, we have to practice our memory verse. So let's all stand up. We'll go over this twice, just like we do, do in our services here. And we will go like this. So it's bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. It's Colossians 3 verse 13.
All right, great job. Let's put a lot of enthusiasm into it this time. All right, ready? Let's go. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Colossians 3, verse 13. All right, great job, guys. I'll see you back next week. But before we go, Miss Heidi's going to come up and talk a little bit about the connection activities you can do with your families this morning. That's Ooh. right. Hey, friends. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I'm so glad that you were here to be a part of our parable of the lost son. So after we have our worship time, then normally you had your small groups, right? But today it's an opportunity for your family to have a small group connection time together. So here's our activity. We thought that you, with your family, could make six different pages for a little book about the story of the lost son. We have the details of this on a River Oaks Kids Group Facebook page, and it's also in the PDF that you'll see in the email links that were sent to you. So, you and your family can work together. Maybe each person could do a different page. You could illustrate it. And then your job is to put the story in the correct order. You could staple it together and make your own book about the parable of the lost son. All right? And then part two is coming next week. We also have some discussion questions ready for you that are also in the PDF. Some things that you and your family can talk about together as you learn more about forgiveness. We're also hoping, of course, that you will get out your Bibles, right? Our memory verse is from Colossians 3.13, so we want you and your family to find the verse together. Then, one final thing, don't forget that we always have a prayer time together. Remember, we have our prayer journals that we always use for our praises, for our prayer requests. And I don't want you to forget, earlier in the week, we talked about creating a prayer jar where you and your family could either illustrate or write the names of different people in our community who are continuing to serve us and support us in this time. And then every day you pull one out and that shows you which group of people you're going to pray for that day. All right, so hopefully you and your family have created a prayer jar. We look forward to seeing you soon. Hopefully you're staying safe. Remember that we are praying for you. We love you a lot and happy Sunday. We'll see you later.